To some political matters now, the 12 aspirants jostling for the All Progressive Congress ticket in Ondo State Governorship Primary stated for July the 20th have been cleared by the party's screening appeal committee. All got their clearance on Wednesday night. The Tijani Tumsa-led nine-man screening committee had before yesterday cleared all but one of the 12 aspirants. The committee did not give the name of the disqualified aspirant. But in a statement issued in Abuja, an official of the party, Yekini Nabena, said the appeal committee has submitted its report to the governor, May Malabuni, led APC caretaker Extraordinary National Convention Planning Committee. He said the APC screening appeal committee cleared all the 12 aspirants to contest the party's forthcoming primary election. The Independent National Electoral Commission has feast October the 10th for the governorship election in the Sunshine State. Joining us live now is Nelson Ekujumi. He's a public affairs analyst to take a look at, um, take a look at these and others. Good to have you, Nelson. So we have Nelson on the line. Good morning, good morning. All right, thank you for being with us this morning. Now, do you foresee a transparent process in Ondo primaries, unlike Edo, where almost half of them were disqualified? Well, thank you very much. I think what this portends is that democracy is at work. If we can have this uh, avalanche of uh, access just for the seat that is even presently occupied by an incumbent from the same party, it tells you clearly that, you know, uh, the party is, uh, is in tune with uh, democratic tenets, which is about people's uh, aspirations being exercised. Right. Uh, Ondo has, uh, th there's been a lot of interesting uh, things out there in that state. Now, what does this say about the incumbent with other 11 other aspirants, you know, contesting against him in his party? Well, as, like I said, you know, it's a good development that uh, the incumbent has 11 nations from his party to contend with. Unlike what we normally see in previous uh, circumstances like this, where uh, a lot of aspirants do withdraw uh, for the incumbent to run again. Or, uh, but in this case, we have seen a situation whereby the incumbent, as a citizen, you know, has 11 uh, members of his party who are also are in his seat. We just hope that the primaries will be transparent, you know, free and fair. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, again, around Ondo, uh, Ondo state politics, you know, the former governor of Lagos State has come out to deny sponsoring any aspirant against Governor Akari Dolu. Should that rest the issue of speculation? Come again, come again. All right. I said the former governor of Lagos State uh, has come out to deny sponsoring any aspirant against Governor Akari Dolu. And I'm asking, in your opinion, should that now rest the issue of speculation? Well, it should, because uh, we are well used to uh, name dropping in politics. It's part of our political culture in this climate. But uh, be that as it may, uh, even if the former governor of Lagos State has come to deny speculation of supporting the governor. One expects it you know, to subside, but, you know, politicians do what they have. Uh, some people might feel, you know, the man is being clever, I have that, you know, maybe he's, he's trying to sub, uh, support the incumbents, certainly. But be that as it may, we just hope that, you know, the aspirants will go into the field with a clear mind that, you know, they have a level playing field to contest that primary with the incumbents. And we also, like I said earlier, we hope that the committee in charge will ensure that there's a level playing field for all the aspirants, such so that, you know, the bitterness that will accrue after the primaries is greatly minimized. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a public affairs analyst and someone who is following closely the affairs uh, of Ondo State, how do you think all of this thing playing out affects the people for whom these uh, leaders are supposed, uh, you know, to uh, be role models, if you like, uh, who are custodians of the affairs of the people? Well, I believe that the people of Ondo State are very enlightened, they are very educated, they are politically sophisticated. And one expects that the people generally are watching keenly how events unfold. And you know that uh, when the day comes, you know, for them to do justice at the polls, that the people will be able to take the right decision, you know, and do justice to their political destiny for the next four years. Mm -hmm. It is very, very imperative. And you know, this is also a medium to call on all the 
educating me a medium of communication, you know, to continuously engage people to realize that election day is not just a day for you to go and cast a vote. It's a day that you are determining what happens to your political, economic, and social destiny for the next four years. So it is very important for us to have people to the consciousness of the people. Yeah. All right, lastly, before I let you go, uh, what's your charge for the leaders of that state and would be uh, leaders of Ondo State also? Well, my charge to the leaders of Ondo State is that they should continue to ensure peace, they should continue to preach non violence, free and fair elections, as well as encourage and admonish all stakeholders to play their role. Because uh, election is only about the electoral empire, every stakeholder has a role to play. The voters, the security agents, the media, the political parties, their supporters, the observers. You know, we all have a role to play, and also we all play our role responsibly. That's when we can have a credible exercise. So, my monitor is that, you know, every stakeholder in Ondo State should realize that, you know, the future of Ondo State is better than anybody's personal ambition. So, they should, you know, put the needful with regards to putting their eyes on the ball.